And more importantly, thank all of you for taking the time to come out today. Um, it's, it's exciting to see the kind of spirit that we have in Tualatin and the interest that people have in their community. I have the distinct honor of being the mayor of Tualatin, and, and it's an obvious pleasure. And as the mayor of Tualatin and as other elected officials tell you, we're not elected to run the government. We're elected to be spokespeople, representatives, and servants to the community. And when it's a community like Tualatin, it's so easy to do, and it's so much fun. And it's, it's such an honor to, to have that privilege, and I mean that sincerely. Um, I also want to thank the Chamber for hosting this event, and the Chamber has hosted this event for several years. And I'm going to talk more about the Chamber in my presentation, but this is such a vibrant group, it's such a, a vital organization um, to our community, and they do so much. And so very appreciative to the Chamber, Christine, and, and all the officers and, and, the, and the staff. And uh, it's, it's just great to have you folks be such a vital team. Also, I want to say that we have with us um, some uh, other officials. And in Washington County, particularly, I will tell you, the local elected officials, the government entities, whether it's cities, whether it's special districts, whether it's, it's the education system, the chambers, but, but, the, but, the, but the elected officials particularly collaborate, collaborate very well. We work hard together. We don't always agree, but we look for what's best for the region and how that best impacts each of our individual cities. And um, just a couple of the folks are in the room today that I want to introduce. First of all, we have County Commissioner um, Andy Dyke, who is actually now running for County Commission Chair and been on the commission for at least eight years. 16, 16 years. Time gets away. Thank you for making the trip all the way over. And, and, and again, by way of example of, of city collaboration, I want to introduce uh, Mayor Pete Truax, Mayor of Forest Grove. And Pete's been on the city council. Thank you, Pete, for being here. He's been on the city council 10 years, recently appointed mayor. Uh, Richard Kidd um, um, resigned in order to run for a county commission. But again, it's a long ways from Forest Grove to Tualatin and still be in the same county. So taking the time to come over here, appreciate that. Um, we have obviously um, some other folks in the room I want to point out, and I, when I do that, I always miss people, but we have uh, some city councilors. I saw Monique Beichman. Monique? And we also have Chief Mike Dyke from TVFNR, Captain Brown. And I, I don't know if there's anyone else on the government in that I've missed. Help me if, if so. Um, but, and then I just want to digress one more moment and talk a little bit about Tualatin Tomorrow. Because Tualatin Tomorrow is, in my opinion, good government at its best. And it doesn't come from City Hall. <laughs> and again, government isn't just inside the walls of City Hall. It's the community. And the planning for our future, how we get around, how we grow, how we care for each other, how we recreate, those focus areas. And I think most all the focus lead people are here today. Working through grassroots, working through public involvement and outreach, and then partnering with the elected city, the government, if you will, the school district, the fire district, the county, and a myriad of, of other providers that I won't even begin to mention that are lead partners um, that, that together boy this community and so to have that kind of participation and have that be broad-based from the community from the business folks the other government entities um you might hats off to candace and frank all the leads and some of the and beth the, some of the newer ones and and bethany who's the baptism by fire and 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 others it's just it, it's it's humbling for you folks to put this kind of energy and effort so thank you um I guess I'll get into the presentation. I got a couple slides I want to move through rather quickly, um, and then I'll try to get to some question and answer. What are the topics I want to talk about? The things that affect you and your city: um, financial, our financial strength, some development news, transportation updates, public safety, keeping the city running smoothly, the enhancement projects and programs in our community, and then the real, I think, uh, crescendo is the community spirit in this town, which we've already sort of seen witnessed. Um, so let's talk a little bit about finance. Uh, how, how are the city finances generated? What, how are they used? How does it affect 
what happens in your community. There's basically two kinds of funds that come into the city. There are dedicated funds, which are things like gas taxes or water sewer charges, things of that nature, um, and they are specified for certain uses. And then there's general fund money, which runs the parks and the libraries to a degree, and police and um, administration and so on. And that's what we normally think of when we think of our property taxes. It's that general fund money. The tax rate uh, for the cities was established back about, I don't know, 13, 14 years ago with ballot measure 50. Interestingly, Tualatin has, as you can see, at $2.26, um, if not the lowest, very nearly the lowest property tax rate in the region. And yes, if you, does that really mean that a city like Beaverton is more than twice the tax rate? Yes, it does. And Lake Oswego has their own fire, so you don't take a buck and a half out or whatever. Still, um, it's an interesting study in terms of finance because does that mean that, that those other cities that have those rates collect substantially more money per thousand? Yes, it does. Does that mean they deliver better services, provide a better community? I'll let you be the judge of that, but I think that uh, this community does well. When you talk about revenues, however, the property taxes, if this works, yeah, the property taxes is only maybe about half of our general fund. And you can see that it's relatively flat because the economy is relatively flat and it's driven on property values. Um, the red line are franchise fees, and that's really another tax that you pay, if you want to call it that. It's a fee that, that your government charges your, generally your utilities to use public rights away to send pipes to your house for gas or cables for TV or phone or internet or whatever. So you pay that in your bill. There's no mistake about that. It's a substantial part of the city revenues. Um, the green, um, is, in this case, is intergovernmental transfers, and that's largely your library, your countywide library levy. We'll talk about that a little bit later as well. Um, but, and you can see the revenues have flattened off in the last couple of years. Our expenses, and that's supposed to go forward, our expenses for the general fund for running government is largely what? It's largely personnel cost. And um, the, I will tell you, I was going to mention I guess a little bit later about the, the staff in the city of Tualatin. You're blessed with a very dedicated staff. There are I think maybe 135, 140 FTE. Um, these people, many of these people work for the city for decades. Um, they work really hard. Many times it's behind the scenes. But in the economic situation that we're in today, times are tight. And a year and a half ago or so, we went to our public employees and said, you know what, we need to freeze wages. We can't offer any raises. We actually need to ask you to pay more towards your benefits and change that benefit structure. And you hear about that and you read about that and you get pushbacks from the unions and, and you know, all these things, whether it's you know, in, a, in a large agency here in Oregon or whether it's on the East Coast, you know, the 12 and city employees, they recognize the job that needs to be done. They recognize the economic conditions they're in. They know it's temporary. They know it's going to turn. And they're, they're willing to say, you know, we well, are going to give a little bit. And so, you know, I, I, I guess publicly I would thank all of our staff who aren't even here today for, for having that, that vision, having that dedication. Having said that, we have then flattened off our personnel costs over the last year and a half. Um, and then there are some material costs, energy for one, other things that, that continue. Costs are managed, costs are in control, and this isn't running. There we go. See if I can figure out how to recover. Don't ever give a remote to a guy who talks with his hands. <laughs> so now let's talk a bit about development. Um, obviously, the economy has been flat, but Tualatin has still been uh, a center of development. And we've had some businesses that have continued to grow. We have some businesses that have been recognized, some nationally. We'll talk a little bit about um, some of the infrastructure to support that development. Just a little bit in the news, a Union Wire Company, Union Wine Company, bringing a, a unique wine concept, a, a manufacturing concept, to Tualatin. Uh, Cascade Drapery, actually on the, the Conan O'Brien show, because they produce the drapery. And if you haven't read about their product, it's an amazing product. Um, a significant, uh, no, noteworthy activity is on the Coach property, which is sort of the last, largest industrial uh, area undeveloped in Tualatin. Um, probably one of the larger ones in the region, and ground has been broken on that for future development. <clears throat> a business that has been in Tualatin for more than a decade, 
that a country, and the company's been around, I think, over 100 years since the Edison days, really, uh, Leventon Manufacturing, and I would imagine that every light switch and every wall plug you've ever seen manufactured by Leventon. They're here in Tualatin. Um, they've added, um, they've grown, I don't remember the numbers, but something like over 100, and, 100, 200 employees in the last 10 years. They're looking to add another 50 or 100 over the, the, the next short period of time. And they've moved into to green energy management. So you've taken a bedrock kind of business here in Tualatin, a well-kept secret I might add, and you see them expanding into the future of, of green technology and energy management. And then we have some other exciting opportunity or, or examples, the Grand Hotel, that, that's wonderful to have that um, facility built here in Tualatin. And you know, that's again the ripple effect of what's going around on the north end of town in Bridgeport Village and shops at Bridgeport. Um, the uh, Novellus, I'm gonna talk about that for a moment. I don't think they're the largest employer in Tualatin, but second or third, certainly the largest industrial employer. Came here about 10 years ago, um, headquartered in, in San Jose or in the Bay Area, and over the years have been growing the business units in Oregon because they like doing business in Oregon. They like doing business in Tualatin. They had to make a business decision to move um, around 100, potentially up to 200 jobs out of California. They looked all over the world, literally, to their options and with an intent and a desire to want to come to Tualatin. I'm happy to tell you that because of the collaboration of work from our legislators, from the governor's office, um, it doesn't hurt to have a chief of staff living in Tualatin, I think, in the governor's office, but, um, th and, and the work of the county, um, that we're able to come together with an understanding and an intention to, to develop some legislation that will reward high-tech businesses who continue to grow in Oregon. And, and in fact, this kind of, um, this notion came out of this developed conversation and we attracted a few uh, relatively significant uh, uh, associates like Intel and others to say, hey, this is a great idea. So um, good things can happen in small places. Not such a small place, but a really great place. A good thing happening. Bridgeport Village, and again, just kind of highlight, um, Fred Brewing is here, you can talk to more of him about uh, some of the details, but um, we all know that Bridgeport is a wonderful place. It's fun to go. There's a lot of great stuff there. I'm not sure we all recognize how successful that really is. Largely, almost everyone there is achieving record successes. And one little bellwether, um, the Regal Cinema, is, is, uh, was in the top 10 cinemas in the United States, uh, I guess occasionally, but particularly on, on Avatar. So folks around here like their cinema. But it's not just that. Actually, um, most of the nationals in Bridgeport Village are in the very top echelon of performing in, for their chains. And those are some examples. The regionals, um, and it isn't just Bridgeport Village, but they're seeing the same kind of phenomena at Nyberg Woods. Um, famous Dave's had the highest revenue of first month, I guess, of all the chains. Old Navy is the highest producing one in the Pacific Northwest. There's something special about this location. There's something special about this community. There's something special about the demographics and the people who live here and live around here. So what about the future? Well, um, there are a number of areas that there's a lot of work that's been going on, that continues to go on. Um, sometimes it's Groundhog Day over and over again, but uh, a number of areas. One is we've been talking, and if you're perennial attendees to the State of the City address, you'll recognize a number of the topics, and one of them has been our downtown renewal plan we've been talking about for the last three or four years. I say, the end is coming, the end is coming. Well, the end is here, and we'll talk about that. Um, urban re rural reserves, that's been a process that's been going on for about a year and a half that, that um, well, I'll, I'll talk more about that in a moment. There's a very important vote tonight at Metro on the outcome of that. Our Southwest Tualatin Concept Plan, Tualatin Tomorrow, which we always talked a little bit about, and then um, our downtown, downtown center as it relates um, to urban renewal, and we'll talk about that. Urban rural reserves. This is the notion that we keep within Oregon all of our cities, hello. Okay, we're gonna get there. That we keep within all of our, I just put that down. <laughs> Don't touch, Lou. Um, that, that we keep within all of our cities a tight urban form within an urban growth boundary. Recognizing that as growth occurs, you can redevelop, you become more dense, but you also need to expand. And so how and where you expand has always been a very contentious process. Someone decided, and we went through a legislative process in Salem to get